Open any news magazine and you will likely be overwhelmed by the issues facing our country. More alarming than the problems themselves is the inability of our government to confront the issues we're facing. Elections, the cornerstone of our democracy, are in danger. The cost to run a campaign has risen rapidly, and our politicians, who are supposed to be dependent on voters alone, have become reliant on fundraising to sustain their careers. The need for campaign finance reform is the issue no one seems to discuss, but everyone understands. I think it's fair to say that every issue in one form or another relates to campaign finance reform because almost all policy making that's done in Washington or even at the state or local level is done by officials who had to get elected. In order to get elected, they needed to raise funds, and so there is a degree of there's a degree to which money is connected to literally every policy on the policy landscape. It takes two steps to understand why you need to be concerned about it. So take any issue you care about. Um, I care about global warming as the most important issue. Okay, we're never going to get global warming legislation in the United States so long as money drives results in campaigns because all the money in the world is on the side of blocking global warming legislation and they will always be effective. Take health care. We're never going to get real health care reform so long as money buys results in elections. We're never going to get simpler taxes because the tax system is architected not only to raise money for the federal treasury, but also to raise money for campaign treasuries. So take every issue you care about, and when you recognize all of them have this common element, which is that money is blocking real reform on those issues, at a certain point you've got to stop and say, okay, we have to deal with this root problem if we're going to ever address any of these issues that, that are the things that motivate people. Real corruption is what I would call legal corruption, and that is uh, that at the end of the day, uh, Congress is very heavily dominated uh, by big money interests through campaign contributions, uh, increasingly through the Citizens United decision, uh, and by lobbying. Is that illegal? No, it is not illegal but it is a corruption of the democratic process. I think, though, that there's a competition where policymakers have to think twice, and they know what the interests of their donors are, and they know what the interests of their constituents are, and there's a competition, and that competition in and of itself becomes problematic. Um, you know, as John Edwards used to say when we used to quote John Edwards, um, uh, there's all the difference in the world between a lawyer making an argument to a jury and a lawyer handing out $100 bills to the jurors. And that's the difference that our lobbying system doesn't quite recognize right now. Because the lobbyists are not only in the business of trying to persuade people about what good policy is, they are also in the business of channeling campaign funds to campaigns. So that when you hear, here's what good policy is, you also hear, and there's going to be a huge bunch of money that follows you if you do what we say good policy is. You know, recently I saw, I watched a, a fight on Capitol Hill in which the Senate was going to be voting on ending tax breaks for uh, oil companies. Right now, oil companies, in addition to their enormous profits, they are able to get tax subsidies to do what they want to do anyway. And this is something that is, is incredibly unpopular with the American mainstream. If you take, took a public opinion poll, Americans are overwhelmingly against the idea of giving these additional tax subsidies to, to oil companies. So I'm thinking, well, this will be a no-brainer. And it lost. It lost in the Senate. Uh, Republicans overwhelmingly voted uh, against it, a handful of Democrats did as well. There's a pretty clear distinction where you can see Big Oil's favorite politicians were voting with Big Oil, and Big Oil's least favorite politicians were voting against them. In 2010, the Supreme Court issued its Citizens United ruling, which allowed for the creation of super PACs, political entities that could receive unlimited amounts of contributions from corporations and wealthy donors. I asked Senator Sanders 
how voters would see the impact of Citizens United in the upcoming election. Corporations can go right into their own treasuries, take money out, uh, and put that money into television and radio ads without disclosure and through phony front organizations. You're not going to see this ad was paid for by ExxonMobil. This ad was paid for by Citizens for a Better America. It's just a totally phony, phony group funded by large corporate interest. How people will see it, how it will impact people's lives is when you turn on the television, you're going to see if you are sick and tired about all of the ads you've seen in the past, especially ugly negative ads, you ain't seen nothing yet because Citizens United is opening the floodgates to a huge amount of television and radio ads, and most of them are going to be negative, I suspect. Many people have proposed solutions to end the corrupting influence of money in politics, the most common being publicly financed elections. Well, the thing we could do right now without changing any constitutional rule, without responding to Citizens United at all, is just to enact what I call citizen-funded elections. So. Um, Citizen-funded elections means elections funded by citizens, not non-citizens. So non-citizens include the French and the Chinese and corporations. They are not citizens. But number two, they need to be funded in a way that's uh, having all citizens fund elections, as opposed to the current system where only a tiny slice of the top 1% fund elections. So 0.26% of Americans um, give more than $200 in a congressional election. 0.05 give the maximum amount in any congressional race. 0.01, the 1% of the 1% um, give more than $10,000 in a campaign cycle. So what we need is a system where not just half of 1% or a quarter of 1% are funding elections, but where everybody is funding elections. So I would support something like a voucher system where voters get vouchers, um, first $50 of their taxes get returned as a voucher, which they can give to any candidate who chooses to take only vouchers plus contributions of, let's say, $100 to fund their campaigns. So um, that would produce an enormous amount of money in the political system, but it would be money coming from everybody in the political system, not just the tiniest slice of the 1%. And so I think that if there was public financing and policymakers had less of an incentive to spend so much time on fundraising that they could then spend more time on policymaking and working in committee pro through the committee process and engaging their colleagues and working through compromises, et cetera, that in general the entire political process would be more constructive. Why should Americans care about one more issue? Why should we take the time to think about one more problem facing our country? Frankly, you don't have the luxury of being cynical or the luxury of being alienated from the political process because what is happening politically is so important that if you say, oh, look, it, this, the whole political process stinks and I don't want to be involved, it's really ugly, the rich have all of the power, I'm not going to do anything. Well, you're just cutting off your nose to spite your face. If you hope to be able to afford to go to college, if you hope to get a good job when you're out of college, if you hope that global warming doesn't cause irreparable harm to our environment, you know what? You have no choice but to be involved in the political process. You know, you are the future of this country. You're going to be around, I hope, a very, very long time. Decisions that are being made now are going to impact your lives. You have got to be involved.